Hello and welcome to this week's edition of LCDC TV, the news channel for the London cab trade. On today's show, we will be talking to Mr. Roy McMasters. Who's Mr. McMasters, you might be asking? Well, he's been involved in the cab trade for over the last 30 years. He started at LTI, remember, in Carnwolf Road and all the early days, ended up with Penzo uh, and was instrumental in bringing in the Mercedes Vito taxi for the London market. And um, I drive a Vito myself, and we knew that they were very, very popular vehicles. Euro 5s, Euro 4s, 5s and 6s, yeah? Also, Roy was instrumental in helping the club with this. As you can see, this was our response to the ULES proposals. Uh, I'll be going over some of the summaries and the LCDC recommendations that we made in 2015. And boy, was we right. Anyway, moving on. If you remember from last week, uh, we discussed the vehicle numbers, the knowledge with Danny Scarf. Well, the response from the drivers has been amazing. We've had hundreds of emails and calls asking questions, concerned drivers. And, and what I can tell you is that tomorrow, the LCDC, along with other trade halls, will be meeting at Taxi House regarding proposals or the knowledge. No one's suggesting for the minute that we slash the numbers or anything like that and make it easy, no. Because as I've said before, with the LCDC, we strongly believe that the knowledge, along with the vehicle, are the bedrock of our industry. But what we've got to look at is maybe find some way, somehow, to make the knowledge more accessible and attractive for new candidates. Because if we leave it as it is, it ain't working, the numbers are going to drop, it's just going to be awful, okay? But you're watching this, like me, cab driver, <clears throat> and you and I both know it is no coincidence that the massive fall in numbers for the knowledge equates to the massive rise of numbers in the private hire market. When you have to do three, four years on the knowledge, have to buy a bespoke taxi, so everything's regulated and above board and expensive and time consuming. Since TfL done absolutely nothing to bring in any meaningful regulation within the private hire industry, okay, and, and never wanted themselves to bring a, a, a court case regarding applying for hire. When, if you look at it now, you've got taxis and private hire vehicles working in the same marketplace, but they've got none of our costs, none of our regulation, none of our time and effort, then maybe that just answers the question itself. That if you're a young fella looking for a job and you can say, why do the knowledge for three years and then have to go and buy the taxi that they tell me, or in a month's time, I could be working for one of the many minicab firms in my car, my family car. All I do is put a sticker in the window, pay me money for my license. There's no regulation. They, they've stopped the driving test. They fought the uh, English language requirement. So it, it's easy. So that's where we are. So um, what I've got as well for you is the latest stats, uh, driver numbers and vehicle numbers. And again, it's not good. Um, I've got them here. Right, the taxi driver licenses are 20,070. That's a drop of 38 from last week. The taxi vehicle licenses, th oh, this is so shocking, 13,859. That's down 42 in a week. And if you compare that to the private hire licenses, there's 102,230 driver licensed. And if you look at the private hire vehicles, there's 77,805 vehicles on the road. So I have to ask you, Sadiq, if you're true to your word and you don't want London to come out of the pandemic in a car-led recovery, 
Why are you doing nothing to stop the hordes of private hire on the streets of London that are causing congestion, that are causing emissions? What are you doing? Because as a taxi driver, I'm not in that car led recovery because I drive a bespoke London taxi that is 100% wheelchair accessible, wheelchair ramps, grab handles, hearing loops. That is the taxi for London. So if you're really serious about your green agenda and you're really serious about our reduction in our age limit from 15 years to 12 years, then pray. May I ask you, Heidi Alexander, what is your plans to help reduce the amount of private hire vehicles on our road? Because as you say, you do not want a car-led recovery. I'll leave that to you. Okay. After this short message, I will be joined in the hot seat by none other than Mr. Roy McMaster's if you've got any questions for myself or Mr. McMaster, please email me at thelcdc at gmail.com or you can just DM the club on Twitter. I look forward to some questions and I'll see you after the break. Thank you. Hello and welcome back again to LCDC TV. Sitting next to me in the in the in the hot seat is none other than Roy McMaster. Roy, welcome. Isn't that hot? Let me shake your hand. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks a lot for having me, Grant. Actually, I thought I was coming over here for a, bit, a bite to eat, and now you put me on the hot seat. Well, <laughs> the sandwiches are in the fridge, uh, and we're tucking into a bit of lunch after we film <laughs> this. Roy, I've known you many, many years. Okay, more so during the Penzo years, when you brought in the Mercedes Vito. Tell some of the, the trade out there, what is the history with you and the cat yeah. trade, Roy? Well, I was listening to you talking about Carmouth Road and Wandsworth, and I remember those years, and, and what you said about the standards of the vehicle and the knowledge is what makes the difference in the cat trade in London. And uh, back in uh, 1989, we introduced in the fairway, some of you remember, the wheelchair accessibility. And I think that's one of the great standards that's made London, you know, the best city in the world for taxis. And that's been replicated in lots of other cities around the UK, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Manchester and Birmingham. All of them have 100% wheelchair accessibility. So it's that in combination with the knowledge, in my view, that, that has made taxi, London taxis the best in the world. Lovely. So. And, and Roy, as I touched on really lightly, um, with Penzo, you worked at Penzo, the, bringing the Mercedes Vito into London, which sort of broke the monopoly of LTI, that was massive for the cab trade in London, Roy, wasn't it? Well, indeed, there were uh, one or two colleagues uh, at LTI. We believe firmly in the idea of driver choice because if you've got choice, you've got you know competition, you've got alternatives, and what suits one driver doesn't suit another. And we felt that the Mercedes brand and the Mercedes taxi, the quality that that Mercedes represents, was going to be a fantastic alternative for for drivers, and I think it turned out to be that. Well, it was very popular, Roy, wasn't yes, it? Well, you drive one. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. you drive one, and my brother. And, uh, yeah, and uh, like you said, it's all about choice. Mm -hmm. and, and Roy, going back to 2015, when we attended the ULES meetings, the ZEC meetings, I've got to say it, Roy, I, I don't know whether you want to agree or not, but from the club's point of view, every promise that TFL made to the cab trade regarding ULES, ZEC vehicles, it's broken. 
Well, I remember the um, the idea that there would be five alternative choice of vehicles. In fact, it was launched in um, at the end of 2017, only one vehicle that met the standard. And if you remember in this document that we put out, we firmly recommended that Euro 6s should continue to be the choice. And in fact, if you look at a, um, the introduction of clean air zones in the outside London in all the regional cities that were identified by the government as being requiring clean air zones. They've introduced um, what they call category C um, clean air zones which have introduced sort of 10 year age limits and 15 year age limits for ULEV vehicles but 10 year age limits for um, Euro 6. Now, they have allowed, continued to allow drivers to choose Euro 6s, bearing in mind that these vehicles will be um, have a 10 year age limit. And because the price of the Euro 6 is so much less expensive than the ULEV, drivers are, are being able to choose that and be quite happy with the 10 year age limit. So, in La so, sorry, Roy, but in Manchester, if I was a taxi driver and I wanted to buy an M8, like the Mercedes Euro 6, what would I have to pay and what would the grant be from the council to get me into a Euro 6? Uh, Do you know any figures, Roy? Well, the Euro 6 uh, Mercedes Vito, the same in, as it is in London, but without the rear wheel steer, is currently costing 37500 And they would get a grant from the local authority, government supported, of £5,000. Now you could, so it brings it down to just over about 30 grand on a 10 year age limit. So the drivers are quite happy to purchase at that sort of price with 10 years, as opposed to buying a more, obviously a more expensive vehicle on initial price um, of maybe around 60,000 pounds yeah. and a 15 year age limit, but they would get 10,000 pounds back. So it'd bring it down to around 50. See, the thing is, what I can't get my head around, Roy, is if you can get the Euro 6s for sort of 32,000 and, and you put a couple of grand down and you've got a 30 grand loan and you say, right, I'm going to keep this cab for 10 years. It's going to have its checks every year. Everything about it is going to be mechanically sound, everything regulated, everything good. If you was a driver and bought it and had 30 grand on the book for 10 years, you're looking at payments of around £270 a month. Mm -hmm. So if you had a 10 year age limit, that's not the end of the world by any standards, Roy, is it? Absolutely, I, I agree entirely. And that's, that's why many drivers are buying the Euro 6. But we, since the 1st of January 2018, as you are well aware, the London cab trade was never given that choice of having diesel. 1st of January, couldn't buy any more Euro 6 diesels. December the 31st, <coughs> bomb cut off, right? And when you look at the figures now, there's 9,000 diesel taxis and 42,000 diesel minicabs on the road. So again, I've got to ask you, Heidi, I've got to ask you, Sadiq, I've got to call you out. Who are the polluters? Because it's very easy, people say, no, it's the black cab trade. But there's four <coughs> times as many diesel mini cabs as, as black cabs. It doesn't make sense, Roy. And, and one of our proposals, while well, you've got that fantastic document, and what we're going to do with this document is find the original PDF and we're going to put it on our website. So all you drivers who are watching the show and thinking, sorry, Roy, and thinking, what is this? I've not seen that before. You'll be able to access it. Go to our website and you'll read it. And, and one of the points on our recommendations, Roy, was this. Transport for London should encourage sales of Euro 6 diesel taxis as the fastest and most practical way of reducing taxi emissions in London. This could be done by providing some level of purchase incentive on Euro 6 taxis. So instead of even allowing us to carry on buying them without an incentive, they've stopped it. You know, and, and that to me is one of the key reasons why the numbers of the vehicles have just gone off a cliff. We, we've been cut adrift, really, you know. Um, 
And again, Roy, just quickly, one of our other submissions that we put in, uh, recommendations, and I'll be very brief. Um, the 10 year age limit, we know 12, right? They're talking. Um, the 12 year age, 10 year age limit, and more expensive taxes will be extremely damaging to the taxi trade. Even with proposed TFL incentives, many drivers may leave the trade and new drivers may opt to go to the private hire trade. This will, by definition, reduce the provision of safe, accessible transport for London's population. And if you look at 2016, which was the year after our proposal, there was 21,759 taxes. Today, there's 13,900. So we're not saying that we're clever clogs. We're saying that we called it right six years ago. And we are in exactly the situation that we predicted, Roy, aren't we? Yes, of course. And obviously COVID-19 accelerated that reduction. But it's, it's a shame uh, when driver numbers and the number of cabs, uh, you said last week in the Michael Glassman interview, that there weren't enough vehicles around uh, for the drivers that are in the marketplace. But those driver numbers have continued to decrease, even though we know that we're coming out of COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's a great shame. But Grant, I would say, you know, the history is the history. TfL made its decisions. I think what we can see in other cities, they're making different decisions in how they can accelerate towards um, reducing emissions and coming in line with the uh, government requirements. Uh, I think that uh, they have introduced, as I said earlier, 10-year age limits for Euro 6s, but 15-year age limits, 15-year age limits for ULEV vehicles or ZEC vehicles, as you call them. What I think that my own belief is that there shouldn't be an age limit for ZEC vehicles, because after all, they're considerably more expensive. They produce, they can produce zero emissions. So over a period of um, time, you're going to be able to have a vehicle that's of high quality, but high, highly expensive. So if you're going to make it similar to the cost of operation that you have on the Euro 6, you've got to give it the maximum life possible yeah. and not limited to a five year difference, the difference between 10 and 15 years. Because as you know, the age limits were brought in regarding emissions. So if you're going to buy a, a very expensive vehicle, more than what we sort of used to in the cab trade, if the cost of buying into that ZEC vehicle is going to be expensive, then the only real positive for the cab trade would be for the mayor and TfL to extend the life, whether it's as long as it meets the zero emissions every year, it goes up for its test, it gets replated. Yeah, because if you're going to buy a vehicle 80 grand plus, if you had, say, 20 years even to pay it off, a lot of older drivers, because we know the demographics of the cab trade, more over 50 than under 30, they could look at it and say, I didn't really want to buy an expensive vehicle at my age, but if I buy it and it lasts me 10 years, then when I retire, I can sell it with 10 years on the plate, which would make it desirable for the drivers uh, and, and it wouldn't be such a financial hit for the drivers, Roy. Absolutely, I agree entirely, Grant. There's no point in us fighting the Euro 6 argument. It's gone in London. That boat sailed in London. So it's a shame. Unless, anyway. yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that it is very legitimate to say, well, you know, you have two inspections a year on your ULEV vehicle. You have um, a vehicle that is of high quality. Uh, I think vehicles will get more expensive as time goes on because we will move to an all-electric vehicle mm. because that's what governments want, Z completely right. zero emissions, not just zero emission capable. And therefore, 20-year age limit would make absolute sense, or zero age limits, mm, because the standards will make sure, the standards of inspection that you have not only in London, but you have in Manchester, Birmingham, all the major metropolitan cities, to make sure that those vehicles are safe and reliable. 
And like you said, you can't have a, an expensive, high quality product and have it set for 10, 15, you know, 15 years. Because how does the driver make a return on the vehicle? And, and I've had members phone me up and they've been asking me, Grant, I bought an LEV C, but in five years on my lease, when the battery's out of warranty and stuff, what do I do with it? Because I'm going to return it. We can't have, and, and I wonder what's going to happen when any, uh, the, the Z cab from LEVC, when the five years warranty comes up and driver's lease is finished. What are they going to, are they just going to return the vehicle? What's going to happen? Where's the longevity in the cab trade anymore? Because, as you know, mentioned the fairway, Roy. God, I bought a fairway, and you could at that time just keep it and keep it until it didn't get a plate anymore. We've gone from that. I know that. I accept that. But you can't have an expensive all-electric vehicle for peanuts, and someone's got to pay for it. And the driver can't put his fares up because then you won't get no custom and it'd be pointless. Roy, while I've been talking, we've been getting some questions come through. Do sure. you mind if I can answer no, a couple? Yeah. Yes, let's go ahead. Andrew from Facebook. Roy, what is happening with the Penzo taxi parts? I guess he's talking maybe rear wheel steer, stuff like that. Okay. Well, you know, I no longer grant work at, uh, at Penzo. But what I do know is that um, Mercedes, you, the vehicle that you've got is a Mercedes-Benz vehicle. Mercedes-Benz will continue to supply the parts. They're responsible for, for the vehicle. So you should contact either Mercedes-Benz customer service, there's a little phone number on your B post, or through your Mercedes-Benz dealer. And they're responsible for ensuring that you get the parts to keep your vehicle in, in operation. Lovely. I hope that answers your question, Andrew. Uh, Mr. M. Alley, also on Facebook, um, I'll answer this one, Roy. It says, what is happening with Dynamo Taxi? A lot of rumours on social media, what's happening, is it gone bust, etc. We've spoken, the club has just spoken to John Heath from Dynamo. He assures us that it's not going bust. Don't believe everything you see on Twitter. Yeah, He's getting a large number of vehicles coming in November and they're all sold by four. So, Mr. Ali, if, if you're, you're looking to buy one, by the end of November, they're getting a massive delivery and bar four have sold. So there's four dynamos up for grabs. So if that's what you want to do, I suggest quick. get your order in quick, phone up dynamo taxes. Um, Roy, Mr. Sherbert on Twitter, could you ask Roy, what is the situation in other parts of the UK with taxi age limits? I know you know everything and you've just touched on it, Roy. So what is it, 10, 15, that sort of thing? I think we've answered that really, that yeah, most other major cities are talking about 10 or 15 year age limits. Um, as I said, 10 for Euro 6, 15 for uh, ZEC vehicles. I personally think that that limit on ZEC vehicles should uh, be at least doesn't need 20. to be there. Yeah. At least 20. Yeah. Well, okay. yeah, lovely. Well, listen, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have today. Roy, many thanks for coming in. Thank you in. very much, Grant. Lovely to see you Let's again. Let's go and have mate. a bite to eat now. Yeah, lovely, lovely. <laughs> One second, oh, I had a question come through. One more question. Right, she's, there, she's come through live uh, from, and I'll put it up on the screen if you want to see it. Right, there it goes. Right, it says from Simon. I've heard that there is a system that's come out to convert Euro 5 to Euro 6, which should uh, uh, extend the life of a cab, but it's not an LPG conversion. I've heard it's shown TFL, but hasn't been passed. Any info? I sort of mentioned that last yeah. week. Um, I've spoken to a company, and I know others have it in the cab trade orgs. Um, it's a, like a, I don't know, you would know more than me, Roy, but it's a device that they can fit onto the Mercedes engine and I believe TX uh, the way it combusts and stuff recirculation I believe um, and it can get a Euro 5 Vito say up to Euro 6 so if you can get it to Euro 6 then hopefully you could go to TFL and say I'll have my 15 years thank you you've dealt with TFL more than me over the past and mm. would Alex Moffitt and TFL be happy for that I don't know 
let's wait and see. But what I've heard is it's about six thousand uh, pound to buy and have it fitted. So if you're going to get another three years, that's sort of roughly two grand a year. If that's something you want to do, that's something you want to do. But um, I, for one, think that we certainly, you know, need to address the vehicles and, and, and what, where we go from here, Roy. But again, thanks for coming, Dan. I'll put the kettle on and thanks for watching. Take care. Thank you. Thanks.